Hello. Hello. You're sideways. There you I go. I forgot Zoom <laughs> does this, but Instagram doesn't. So I was like, hold on. I was like, I started automatically turning my body to try to match you. Isn't there a <laughs> reflex called that? What is it? Yeah, I don't know, but you know who know, would know is Trevor. So we should probably ask him about Treva? that. How is Treva? Treva. Treva. I don't know. I thought maybe he'd be on here today. Maybe he oh. will. Maybe he will. <laughs> nice to see your face. Nice to see your face. How is everything going? 65 Good. miles north. I know, right? It's <laughs> actually probably only takes 65 minutes to get here right now. Well, the traffic's like getting, hours. it's getting worse and worse. I've been watching it. Like, don't even say that. I don't want it to take me two hours to get home tonight. We don't talk like that, do we? No. No. Hi, Megan. So, oh, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. I invited a lot of our friends. Good. Good. <laughs> That's beautiful news. I'm, I'm pretty sure Allie might be on here pretty soon, too, to, like, oh, harass. Oh, gosh. I've been uh -huh. harassing her on Facebook all day. Mm -hmm. Good. She deserves it. <laughs> mm, she does. Yes, she does. How's it so, going down there? Oh, uh, good. It's boring. I'm waiting for golf courses to open. That'll be fun. Like uh, everybody else. Yeah, but I think we're going to open them soon. Yeah. Ventura is so, opening this weekend. Yeah, Ventura is. So let's talk some golf. What do you think? I think we should. I All think right. we should try that. Do you want to um, tell some people on here? I think a lot of people on here know you already. But for those who don't, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career and your lovely business? I am. My name is Lance Gill, and I'm a Capricorn. That means I'm born in January. So I'm going to spit my Coke out. What? <laughs> I just almost spit my drink out. You, you need to learn how to drink. Um, no, we, uh, we've been doing this for about 20, 22 years, if you can't believe that or not. Um, we had the crazy notion back in the early 2000s that golf and the human body basically could be uh, worked together and improved upon. So if you think back to then, if some of you were alive back then, the, golf, the game of golf wasn't looked at as an athletic activity, nor – it wasn't even a pastime. It was just a drinking sport, which it still can be. Um, but putting a little focus on your body can get, help us get a little bit more enjoyment out of the game, a little bit less pain out of the game, and build the whole industry um, together. So we've been on a quest for two decades or a little bit more, uh, just helping people understand that their body is an in important and integral tool in getting better at the game of golf, which we like so much. So that's what we've been doing at uh, Titles Performance Institute and my own business, Lance Gill performance and many of you on joining right now i can see a lot of golf pros are getting on a lot of therapists a lot of trainers on there so you know it the world has really blossomed in the last 20 years and heidi we've known each other for over 10 of those yeah um, yeah a long time and you've seen it start from the inception to now so it's quite a ride for sure and megan's on here and you know you and me and megan our friend ally megan and ally were on here with me last week we all met the same time and even from that, like about 10 years ago to now, I mean, things have really changed and there's been just so much dynamic improvement. And I know like with Titleist Performance Institute, the number of professionals who've gone through that program with you, especially, I mean, has just exponentially increased, which is really exciting. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. I was actually on a, I did a level one seminar with Greg and Dave today um, and Mark Berry, I can see he just jumped on. He... <laughs> I never expected this. When we teach seminars in person, there might be 100, 115. That's a good mm -hmm. sized room. Today we had 224 people no on a way. virtual seminar. And I think every continent was represented but Antarctica. It was the only one that wasn't represented. So I was like, holy moly. It's kind of neat. Now, it was, it was a unique, different environment, but mm -hmm. it, was, it was fun because I got to hear a lot of questions from a, di a lot of different perspectives across the globe. You know, from from the medical world, the fitness world, and the golf world, and mm. it's 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 neat to hear what other people think about what the game is and how to improve it. What were some of the best questions asked today? Do you remember a few of them? Lance, when are you going to shave your beard? That was one of them. <laughs> I said I'm not, but um, <laughs> no, it was it it mainly evol re revolves around the artwork, and and I was I found myself saying this a couple times. We're, we are in a business, when we're talking about golfers, we're dealing with an artwork. So it's a, it's a science-based art. Uh, we have to blend the world of technique, equipment, and the human body together to form the most ideal situation for our golfer. 
And a lot of that is art. A lot of that is, you know, trial and error, but it's all based or steeped in science. And that's where I think we as a profession can learn from one another and really help grow and understand different techniques and how they apply to make our artworks even more masterful, if you will. Mm. And that's an important thing that you guys have always stressed. And that was one of the things that I kind of fell in love with with TPI was that the stressing of the integration of all of the different professions surrounding golf from biomechanicists to golf swing coaches, to medical professionals like myself, you know, strength and conditioning coaches, body work experts. I mean, that's so important to have a team approach around a golfer so you can take that kind of artwork, as you put it, and have everyone kind of take a piece of it to help somebody towards a, a uniform goal. Yeah, 100%. It, it, a lot of people, you know, scoff at the notion that teams are better than individuals, but it's, mm -hmm. it's really true. If, if you really apply yourself in a team setting and get the brightest minds surrounding you, and you, if you're a bright mind, you're surrounding someone else, you can't go anywhere but up. And, and at the end of the day, the, the collateral damage of that system is the golfer experiences something quite amazing that they've never experienced before. And that in itself is a win-win-win scenario. So everybody wins in this, this philosophy. And, and the beautiful part is there is no philosophy. There is no, there is no magic sauce. It's just teamwork. And I think people are finding that to be rather awkward at certain times because that has been lost in, in our world for so long, the word teamwork. Mm. But that's something that, you know, that you've always stressed to me and, you know, that you and I have worked with, with mutual clients over the years and a lot of our friends as well. And I think it's so amazing when people can kind of check their ego at the door, realize that there's a piece of somebody's puzzle and not be the only person who knows how to fix that human. Oh, yeah, for sure. If you think you can do everything for, for your clients, then you're doing your prime, you're, <laughs> oh my gosh, you're doing your primal strength disservice right there. <laughs> um, you, you always can get better results by going outside your box. And that and mm -hmm. doesn't mean losing a client. That doesn't mean no. losing a client. Like I get constantly referrals for, from people saying, Lance, I'm in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Who's, who's your best therapist out in, you know, Venice beach. And, and, and I just tap into my network. I'm like, well, why don't we give Heidi a call? Um, she's up in that area. Maybe she knows, maybe she's available. And that connection with people goes a long way. And at the end of the day, like I said, that collateral damage is the client gets better. And that's what is at the center of what we do, you and I, mm -hmm. from a bodywork perspective. It's all about the client. We're not heroes. We're not saving the world. Nobody's going to remember our name, sadly. But Maybe. That also, well, they might. They might. But we've checked our egos at the door because we constantly have to every five minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, and how many times have I texted you and be like, hey, I have somebody from L.A. who's moving to wherever or they're going to school somewhere. Like, who can you refer? And we refer this person to that's like a, a trusted resource. And that's such a cool thing, having like friends and a network of people that you can rely on. And I don't know, always something that's been really exciting to me. It is. It's fun. It's fun to know that you can send your clients away and they're going to get taken care of very well. And in potentially a very similar manner, not the same, but similar manner where mm -hmm. an overarching ideology of them being at the center of the equation. It was We've got all these golfers who are chomping at the bit and are stuck at home and people are mm -hmm. wanting to get back to the golf course. But the idea being that they maybe can get back to the golf course a little bit better off than they left, you know, go beat their buddies on the first, you know, first tee off. Well, there's no, there's no reason they can't. There's no reason they mm -hmm. can't. This is the perfect time to reinvest into your, your body. Every, every five seconds on Instagram, you're hearing like reinvest into yourself, reinvest into your mental, your, your chakra. And you can take this time to understand what your body can or cannot do in order to apply it to the game that we're going to be able to play very shortly. Um, it's just a matter of time until we can get outside. And even if you don't want to think golf, if you want to just think activities of daily living, this, this minor stuff, this performance work that can be done via a professional at your house um, mm. who's, who's thousands of miles away is available to us. And, and my point was very uh, well put today, we were teaching people around the globe. I'm talking mm -hmm. 224 people around the globe. And the feedback I was getting was like, this is great. Now, they've never been to a seminar with me, so they don't know what excellent is, but they know what great is. And that was really cool. 
So I was jazzed about that. I'm just kidding to the people who don't know me. I'm not arrogant. Um, <laughs> but but I, was, I was really impressed that you can actually learn that mm-hmm. well remotely. And we've been doing that at my business for five years is teaching and working with clients and helping them progress in their programs and their assessments from everywhere. And really why it happened because I was working with tour pros and sure. they're never home. They're always on the road and they're always calling up with questions. And, you know, it was kind of born out of necessity, if you will. Mm-hmm. So with that, are you, like when you're doing that, are you doing like videotaping exercises and sending them to them? Are you doing Zoom calls? Like how are you managing this? Okay, so it's pretty simple. I try to keep it real simple. Me and my team, we have a very uh, direct philosophy. It's not, it's not hands off. It's not, here's a program, go do it. No, I believe that I need to know exactly what's happening with your body at all times so that mm-hmm. when we program exercises or drills, they're specific to your needs, your goals, and your physical limitations. So we take our clients through a minimum of uh, an evaluation every single month on what they can or cannot do with their body. Mm-hmm. So our evaluations are upwards of 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, depends on how much we chat. From there, we mm-hmm. take all the dysfunctional movements and we'll break them down on video, kind of like a golf coach and say, here in your overhead deep squat, here's where you're uh, falling short. Here's a weight shift to the left. And from that, we educate the client as to why that movement is important for, for them to obtain their goals. I want to hit it farther, Lance. I don't want to play in pain. You know, I want to, I want to stop snap hooking the golf ball. I'm going to relate every physical issue back to a potential golf issue and then we're going to start the program. So we're way down the line now before we've even programmed. We'll deliver the exercises, video sets, reps, function form to the client. On, we use an app called Coach Now. Mm-hmm. And the client gets the exercises. They then perform them. If there's questions, comments, and they need help, they videotape themselves or set up a conference where we film them live and we'll go over their form and we'll keep progressing the ball forward, you know, on a daily basis, to be honest with you. I mean, we're interacting with our clients every 24 to 48 hours versus getting a training session two or three times a month. I mean, I would rather have five to 10 minutes of client time every day versus one hour once a week, maybe. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Consistency is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And what we find is if, if you're my client and I give you a text message about, hey, Heidi, did you do your work today? And you're like, yeah, well, I kind of haven't gotten to it. I'm like, get off your ass and do it. <laughs> and I have found that if I just, that's it. And that took me 13 seconds to send those two text messages. Mm-hmm. I'm on your mind for the next five to 15 or even more minutes. So every time I communicate, I, I get you time on task, mental or physical or both. And you're engaged into the process. Now multiply that by 15 to 30 times a month. Now you see the blossoming of the the athletes starting to basically get nurtured into doing the movement. Your, your compliance goes up, they're energized at it and they're getting results. They're getting sure. results. Forgot that too. We like results. Oh, so what do. are you, in terms of people's like, say like we're in a small place environment, you know, like a lot of people who are here might be stuck in an apartment, stuck at home. Maybe they have a garage to go into. A lot of people <laughs> don't even have a yard. You know, it's like, we're stuck in like a small space environment, at least in the Los Angeles area, San Diego too, a bit. Um, what are some of like, can you give us a few kind of like your top tips of like things that you would ask, say, have people do now to maybe like work on improvements? I know if you haven't evaluated somebody, it's a little challenging, but what are some things that we could be having people do that are kind of overarching principles? Mm-hmm. Um, whether this is like mobility things, like getting, I'm sitting in terrible posture right now to talk, like working on getting the chest wall open and working on mid back rotation, working on you know, dissociation, are there things that you think are appropriate that people could be working on at home to improve um, just to, you know, have some things to work on and takeaways from today? Absolutely. One of the things I like to give my students, especially, is Mm -hmm. I call it the commercial workout. And I realized really quickly that they they started like, what the heck are you talking about? You watch commercials? I'm like, "What's, what's going on? Why are you guys yelling at me? You're 14. And um, I was like, why do you guys keep yelling at me about commercials? Like, we don't watch commercials. We DVR everything. We watch everything on YouTube. I'm like, oh, interesting, interesting. I go, how about this? How about in between maps on Call of Duty? You're up and you're doing an exercise. And they're like, what? You know Call of Duty? I'm like, yeah, man. I'm ranked 93. I'm a 93 ranked special ops guy. But the point is. I have no idea what that means. Exactly. That's exactly. (laughs) So I I had to get into their psyche. 
when you have a break, I'm talking one to two minutes, you're up mm -hmm. and you're doing an exercise. And I always like to say, here's your one drill that you're going to do at least three times an hour. And if it's mm -hmm. a, a postural drill, and that was a great, great segue. You said, you know, getting people to understand how to get their shoulder, uh, chest wall opened up because they've been sitting in this posture for the last three hours. Like playing this on one? Xbox. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we so, could demonstrate of that. Exactly. Anything we can do to get it. And really what I focus on, if you want some hot spots, cervical stability, I want a uh, good posture. Mm -hmm. I want a uh, good scapular posture. And really another one I've been going after a lot is feet control. So getting foot stability or I guess control of our feedback, because for the last two months, we really haven't been that mobile, to be mm -hmm. honest, as a people. And if we can start putting some more focus on our feet, I think we'll stem off some injuries once people go crazy. Like the moment somebody you know, hits the button, says go, you can go do whatever you want to do. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to go gangbusters and somebody's going to get hurt. It's going to be great for your business, but I think we can proactively help a lot of people. Yeah. I can tell you that over the last week, people have been asking a lot more about coming back in because they're starting to consider having that surgery that they were supposed to have back in March and they didn't have, and now they're in so much more pain now, you know, or people are starting to think like, oh God, I'm surfing is going to come back. Like I need to start considering getting in. And that's been something that even just today, I've been getting a lot of calls about. Well, you're going to get a lot more because people are cooped up. They want to get out. They want to, they want to move. They want to do something. And frankly, I think the sun, this is, ra this is radical. I think the sun probably is helpful for everybody. For sure. Based on the vitamins and we're not getting any of it. So I, I, I recommend this. This is, this would be a recommendation. I don't care where you are. I think you can at least walk, get up and start walking, whether it's up and down your stairs around the mm -hmm. block, whatever you have to do, just start walking to get your feet engaged. And when you're walking, I would like you to put a focus on your posture. Are you looking at the ground or are you looking out in front of you? And that's a, that's a big tip I was taught once. Pay attention to how you walk because a lot of us just look 10 to 15 feet out in front of us at the ground versus mm -hmm. out at the horizon. Sure. And if you do that, what ends up happening, your whole world changes and you start to see things like poles and mailboxes and other things that are beneficial. And it can translate into your sport of golf, right? And maybe just maybe one day you'll walk a round of 18 holes. What do you think? No, when you're talking about walking, which is really interesting because this is like tying in with a talk that I, I did last week and also a talk yesterday I did with Allie. When you're talking about walking, are we talking shoes on? Are we talking shoes off? Do you not care? You know, like we're talking well, about mobilizing the feet, but. I, I talk, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I've been flow. I don't, I really don't, I'm not one way or another. I would love it if you could do shoes off. Mm -hmm. um, but some people that might be a little bit of aggressive starting point for, I'm a big fan of freeing your feet. A wise woman once told me to free your feet. I think that was Dr. Helwig. <laughs> um, but that's ultimately where we're going with this is having the ability to do the things that you want to do without having the binds of shoes on. For example, I, I fight with Charlie Hoffman all the time and I, I wish he was listening down here and he's a PGA tour player. He's always hitting golf balls in his bare feet or sandals. And I'm like, dude, you're going to get gangrene on your foot and die like Bob Marley did. And he's like, whatever. And I'm like, dude, come on. He goes, no, I'm freeing my feet. I'm grounding, earthing, whatever you want to call it. I'm like, I get it. I get it. Let's just be cautious in how we do it um, and not overdo it. You know, go too much too soon, if you will. And in terms of like, you know, some other foot exercises, one of the things that you taught me a number of years ago was like some arch lifting exercises, like a single leg stance, lifting the toes up, really focusing on that tripod underneath the foot. Is that something you're still teaching? Absolutely. It's so easy. So if you're, if you're bored and sitting at home right now, this is what you can do. You stand up. And you can do this one foot or two feet, doesn't matter. If you're going to do it one, I always say, hold on to something, make sure you're safe. And what I want you to do is pretend this is the bottom of your foot. This is your big toe. This is your little pee pee toe. And this is your heel. You're going to have point one under your heel, point two under the, the fat part of your big toe, but not the toe itself, but the, the head right here. And then point three is going to be over here under the pinky toe head. So one, two, three. When you go into single stance or double stance, I want to know if you have the ability to maintain equal pressure on all three points. That's the tripod mm -hmm. you were talking about. Yes. A lot of people, what happens if you're flat foot, you lose the contact with the outer edge, the pinky toe. A lot of people that don't have control of their arch will lose it laterally. So the, the number two point goes away. 
-hmm. But if we can balance those three all equal, what ends up happening is, um, what is Allie saying? She wants to know about your beard. <laughs> well, it's, it's all about, so, so a little side note before I go, I continue. Me and Allie have been working on <laughs> testosterone issues because, you know, I'm trying to maximize mine. She says 500 normal, so I want 6,000. So she gave me these pills to take, and my God, listen to the byproduct of beard here, Allie, so thanks a lot. I thought it was a quarantine beard, but. <laughs> no, it is. It is. Um, Allie's one of the greatest at men's health on the planet, and you, you heard her yesterday, I believe. Mm. Uh, was yesterday Wednesday? That was yesterday, so, yeah. Yeah, so, but try that because what you're going to find is you're going to see a migration of your balance or pressure to out one edge mm -hmm. or another of your foot. But if you can maintain all three points of contact, it's phenomenal. And doing it while spreading your toes out. How many of you people can spread your toes out? Mark Barry, I'm asking yeah. you. <laughs> he knows. He's like, he's like, I know. So <laughs> one of the cool, you know, Allie, we were just talking before you got on here, we were just talking about the importance of daily walking. And, you know, you mentioned testosterone. And one of the things we were talking about yesterday was about the importance of walking, reducing cortisol, because we're all super stressed, just getting out and moving our bodies in a nice, you know, easy way. And one of the interesting things we were talking about last week, which I think you'll agree on, is that focusing and having that more horizon gaze also helps to decrease your CNS because we're having this more wide peripheral view and having that calm down effect, you know, not specific to golf, but versus like a real narrow focus, which I thought was a really interesting point that we were talking about last week is getting your head up, getting that wide vision, and again, using that as a way to de kind of de-stress and detone. Yeah, I would add one more thing to it. Um, Pia and Lynn from Vision 54 mm -hmm. always talk to me about soft eyes or soft gaze. And I'm like, yeah. what the hell are you talking about? Are you guys are you guys hitting on me? What's going on? So what they mean is you're, you're relaxing your eyes and it, what it ultimately does is allows you to take in more information. Mm. Um, I did this yesterday when I was walking my dogs, my two crazy Australians around the block, and, and literally I have no idea what's going on in my world. I'm just sitting there going, oh, I just want to get done with this. Please don't poop on the road. So that ultimately I started relaxing a little bit, and I was smelling things that I haven't smelled since I was a child. And I don't Not know. Dog no, no. These are flowers that kind of – Reminded me of my grandparents' house in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, I saw two two twenty year olds in the in a flower garden taking a photo shoot. It, to my right, it was like I just picked that up side of my head. It was it was weird. Like things were coming in because I was looking at the horizon. I was allowing mm -hmm. information in, and my eyes weren't focused on anything in particular. Sure. And what I found was my cadence was very rhythmical. It was it was a high speed, not I shouldn't say high speed, but it was a it was an improved cadence. It wasn't just lethargic. Mm -hmm. And and that I got done with my walk, and I was like, man, that was actually a good workout. A little bit of a workout there. And you probably felt a lot more calm and mellow when you got back too. Yeah, I did. I did. Allie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's Allie talking about? Photo shoot equals outdoor sex. I so I thought it was at one point, but it was two girls. Not saying they can't do that, but Remember, they were covered in flowers. I couldn't see what was going on beneath the flower petals. <laughs> and it is Oceanside, so you never know. You oh, never know. Neil House from Ohio's in there. Swing State Neil, how are you? <laughs> so we talked about the feet. We talked a little bit about walking. What's some other performance points that we could be working on at home right now? Maybe like with our posture, with rotation, dissociation of the spine, all that fun stuff. Again, like we're talking about crappy posture from like work positions, too many video games, How not going to help yourself. We like How breathing. About, uh, yeah, breathing because if, if you're rib cat, if, if everybody takes a, put one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly and just take a deep breath in, what, what part, what, what moves? One hand versus the other, top hand, bottom hand, both hands. One of the things that I like to look at is, are, is your rib cage mobile, we'll say. So mm -hmm. if your rib cage is not expanding out and in, it might be indicative of being an upper diaphragm or upper body breather versus mm -hmm. using your diaphragm, which was intended for breathing. That can either go outwards too. The rib cage can expand outwards, um, not just front to back, but lateral as well. So I think breathing exercises are good because it helps the oxygen penetrate deeper into the lungs. It helps create mobility in the lungs. If you're not getting deep um, breaths into the lung cavities, what happens is your, your ribs stop expanding and contracting. And once they do, this goes back to what you said, all of a sudden now your rib cage is preventing you from rotating. Mm 
And if your rib cage is preventing you from rotating, now it's a little bit harder of a job than just focusing on, let's let's make our thoracic spine turn better. Well, you can do that, but if your rib cage isn't working, now we have problems um, with that as well. So I'm trying to always monitor rib mobility, if you will. We don't really talk about it very often, but it's very important. Yeah. And if anyone, I don't know if anyone on here saw the talk that Jana and I did last week. Um, If not, go back to our Instagram page. She gave us a bunch of exercises that are all like specifically for that thoracic mobility, rib cage uh, mobility. Um, we talked about breath work. I feel like we're like doing a really awesome recap of the last two weeks right now. <laughs> so I'm basically regurgitating. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I kind of was going to ask if you just were watching the talks that we did the last week. I saw week. part of them. <laughs> um, did Janet talk to anybody about your obturator internize? No, but would you like to talk about that? Because I love that because it's also part of the pelvic floor. Oh my and you God. know how much well, I love the pelvic floor. It's very important. It's very important. And I, and I don't know if how many people, maybe I can ask you some questions, interview you a little bit. We're always, Jason Glass, my, I know this guy named Jason Glass in Vancouver. He always talks about the core as like a um, Popeye. He used to have uh, spinach cans. Remember, you'd, you'd mm-hmm. pop open a spinach can and eat it. Well, he would squeeze this middle of the can so hard that the top opened up. It ripped off and shot the spinach out. That would be the diaphragm of your Correct. core, all right? The abdominals and the lower back are the can itself. And we're always training the outer edge of the can, and it's mm-hmm. usually pretty strong. But if you squeeze that can and your diaphragm's really good and your core's really good, all the pressure's going to shoot out the bottom. That's your pelvic floor. Mm-hmm. And That's poop interest- coming out of your butt or and gas. Poop or urine. Or urine. Allie, that's the levator ani that you're asking about. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm not afraid to say this. And, and thanks to Janet for saying this a little short story. First time she took one of my classes, Greg, Dr. Rose was like, hey, you got to check this girl out, this lady out. She's really smart. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And so we're in the class and she keeps asking this question in her New Zealand accent. I'm like, who is this girl? Hey, Charlie. Who is it? She's probably a wine groff protege. And I, and I said to her, ma'am, are you getting at something? She goes, yes, I have, a, I have something to say to you. I think you're afraid to say vagina. And I'm like, what? I am not afraid to say vagina. I bet you were at that point. I was terrified of it. And she has been one of the most influential people in being able to talk to females about what's going on. And um, <laughs> Allie, shut up. Um, and it's not just females, though. It's not just females. Here's where I'm going with this long-winded story. I had hip surgery probably 10 years ago. Don't worry, it was a UFC fighting issue. No, don't worry, I was the champ. I hurt my hip, big deal. So I got surgery, and I come out of surgery, do my rehab, and everything's working fine, but Janet's like, no, I don't think everything's working fine. I'm like, really, what's going on? She's like, when you pee, how does it come out? I was like, it comes out really nice. And she's like, well, does it have two streams or one? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, How did you know? Goes, yeah, I'm like, she goes, well, I don't think this muscle is activated. I'm like, well, what do we do? What do we do? How do we turn it on? She goes, I need you to get on the table. So I went down to Encinitas. She put me on the table, <laughs> put the glove on. And she actually was manipulating those muscles that I don't, my gemellies. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you can find your gemellies, I will give you a $1.32. <laughs> and it was amazing because it hurt so much. I forgot about the uncomfortableness of her finger in my anus. Um, Next year anus. Well, yeah, it felt like it was there. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an expert on that region. But at the end of the day, she uh-huh. gave me these drills. And that's where my my first, I guess, uh, walking into Eldoa was. Holy shit. That mm-hmm. is so hard to do. That all that pelvic floor movement, it, it's, it was pretty crazy. And um, yeah, it, it hurt a lot, but it helped a lot too because it created symmetry on my pelvic floor. The pelvic floor can rotate, shift, and you know your left side can be off versus your right. And th- most guys don't pay attention to that, all right? Because no. we're guys. Well, and like, part of what you're saying with the glass analogy with like this Popeye thing is that you know when we have a lot of tension in the middle and if we have too much pressure up or down, it's like if we have pressure up, we have things that we happen like acid reflux. Like that's a big one. People are taking Tums all the time, you know, or we get things coming down. And for women, you know, this is kind of low hanging fruit. We talk about this a lot because we deal with a lot of women who have pelvic floor issues, uh, especially surrounding like the pregnancy period. But for guys, this can be a huge issue. And one of the things we see clinically with men often is we see abdominal hernias. Oh, because yeah. Because yeah. 
you know, and so a lot of times people come in and what they're complaining about is low back pain. Mm -hmm. But the problem is truly that they have some sort of problem around the, you know, around the, uh, the pelvic core somewhere else. So they may have like an abdominal hernia. Now that pressure is translating to like the lumbar disc area. Or guys don't want to tell us, especially women, a lot of times they don't want to tell us about having like fecal incontinence. Like, hey, I lifted, I got to the bottom of my squat and I was in this really nice deep squat, but then I sharted. You know, that's like a super common problem. And you guys all giggle about that, like you being the male gender. No but giggling. it's not a giggling thing. And talking about golf specifically, sorry, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie doesn't know that I'm going to pick his brain about this in a couple of days too. You should. But for the male population or for anyone who's a golfer, your ability to rotate your hips, this obturator internus that you brought, you know, that you were talking about is part of this pelvic floor issue. And so being able to release your hips and have appropriate hip internal external rotation obviously is really important for our golf swing, but it's also really important for our pelvic floor and our core as it will in creating that inner abdominal pressure. Yeah. So going well, back to your original topic, what did Jan Janet have you do for your drills for your obturator internus? Jeez, that's a good question. Do you remember? Um, well, the first thing she was trying to do is get a symmetry in the mobility of the muscle, because my I think it was I think it was my surgical side was frozen. It was literally frozen. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing was establishing um, control of it or demonstrating control at any sort of range of motion with it, and it's still not it's not as um good as it should be um and then from there she did this weird drill with me that which i i won't ever forget so the bridge single leg bridge mm -hmm. well, let's just go double leg bridge you're in the hook line position whatever sure. that means laying on um, your back knees bent correct there and when she took me through this position position one is draw your belly down in um, maybe a little transverse slight posterior tilt just to get neutral pelvis activate the glutes raise up and then she goes, okay, I want you to do that. Well, keep in the air. So my pelvis is in the air. She mm -hmm. goes, now I want you to lower down, but I want you to do it by relaxing your glutes and then your abs. And so mentally trying to turn one light switch on versus another mm -hmm. was insanely hard. That but dissociation. Then, that, oh my gosh. But then she took it to another level. She goes, okay, here's what I want you to do. Same thing. But before you lift, I want you to squeeze your butthole together. Like whoop, squeeze that thing together. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So I did it. And so I'm up in the position. She goes, does it feel better? I was like, yeah, it feels more stable. She goes, now, when you're up, she goes, just let go of your butthole co contraction, your levator ani contraction. I was like, I can't. She goes, why? I'm like, because I'm going <laughs> to shit myself. I really feel like I'm going to lose all functional control here. <laughs> and, she, and I think she made the comment of like, well, there's your pop. I can't. All your energy is going right out your pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to build up this pelvic or your this core energy, and I call it the pelvic powerhouse. I think it's the transmission of the golf swing. All power and ground forces come up through the pelvis. All gravity comes down, and everything is just grinding in there. And if there's a leak, it's all going to leak out that one direction. All right. Mm -hmm. And sadly, I think we're losing a lot of energy out the bottom of our pelvic floor, and that's a that's a problem. That's a problem. Oh. You so know, Allie, take... go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you going to say about Allie? I want to hear Well, this. I was going to say she would take this a little farther and say this would affect sexual health because if you're, if you're trying to be in your prime sexual you know, health, there is always an end product of sex. And we all know what it is. But if your pelvic floor is weak, um, that, that explosive finale definitely can have some deleterious side effects. And I think she would agree with me on that. Would you like to expand on that? Well, it's hard to expand. I mean, it's which direction you're going to expand, right? backwards or forwards Allie do you want to expand on that since I see you writing some word that I like literally don't even know what it means on there what does grunding mean does anybody know what grunding means I have no idea yeah but so Allie, Allie's a she's she's a pretty good uh, resource on that so I I really say we all should flood Allie's inbox with some boner questions I think it's very important you can give me all the walking questions that's fine I'm fine with it <laughs> We like walking, we like that. So, okay, we talked a little bit about the, like breathing, rib cage mobility, pelvic floor. I love you for that. And we've talked about foot mobility. Anything else that you think that people could be doing at home safely without an evaluation that would just generally help their their performance and also like their just general overall overall health and well being? 
Yeah, I would say hip. I would say hip mobility. I mean, that might tie into the pelvic floor, but I find people's hip range of motion with their hips is really poor. Mm -hmm. um, and more and more, I'm finding. Okay, so this may be taboo in certain worlds, but getting the hip flexors to be adequately functional, mm -hmm. I think, is a big misconception. I've talked to Brian Bradley at Agoski Clinic a lot about this, and the the guys over at Agoski are big proponents of the hip being the king. All right, not the glutes. Okay. And I never really understood it, but he, he goes into it saying, no, if the hip flexor, the psoas is really, is Hi, really Chris. functioning properly, it doesn't inhibit your glutes. It only acts as a stabilizer. And so he's asking for proper function of your hip flexors um, versus using hip flexion as well as lumbar extension simultaneously. So those, those, those coupled move, moving patterns that we don't want to see too much of. So I, I think that understanding your hip movements, which tie into pelvis, are going to naturally improve your disassociation, your rotations, your stability, mm -hmm. your coordination balance. All those things will drastically improve just having a better awareness of how those muscles throughout that center part of the body work. Sure. So like, do you give anyone exercises kind of like in the range of like maybe like an RDL or good mornings or anything like that to work on like that? hip flexing, flex, flexion extension um, activity? Or what are, you, what are some things that you're working with with your players in order to help them to understand that better? Well, I, 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 I would more be the lower level dude that is having you learn that motion first, then going to somebody like a Dr. Helwig where she can take it and really advance it into the kettlebells and the, the, the heavier lifting techniques. But for sure, I'm using those patterns all the time, the hip mm -hmm. hinge, whether it's out of a tall kneeling, half kneeling, standing position, a supported, assisted, or resisted. Uh, depending on where the athlete is, I'm always using that hip flexion and extension pattern because I really want to see the movements going to and from. I actually saw a cool video of one of my friends, Jackie DiMartino, down in Florida, it diversified therapeutics her and calvin jackson um did a video of her doing some ke a kettlebell series where it went from swings to like this this bootleg squat and it was phenomenal how it was all centered around hip extension and hip flexion but it was the centerpiece of the movement but it, the drastic changes in position were 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 phenomenal so if look at diversified therapeutics instagram page and you'll see jackie going through that kettlebell now it may be commonplace to a lot of you experts out there but to the mainstream that's not commonplace mm -hmm. and if we could get our athletes to do that even unweighted it would be phenomenal it would be phenomenal i think even charlie weingroff would like it with lactic acid reproduction cycles <laughs> well and that's i think it's an important thing to say too is a lot of people who are on here are medical are golf professionals, you know, like everyone I'm seeing on here is like a trainer, a golf pro, whatever. Yep. For us, some of this stuff might seem like kind of like low level, but it's things that we need to be talking about with all, all of our clients, all of our athletes, because all of these like baseline things, they're not doing those, they're not gonna be able to achieve performance anyways. No, it's foundation, you know, you take any one of Allie's clients and they'll probably know more about uh, male hormones than I do. And they'll argue with me because if you're not educated, um, they don't want to have anything to do with you. So that's a credit to their professional, which is Allie, educating them on why they're doing what they're doing, not just take this medicine. So, sure. yeah, this foundational education and movement reprogramming is everything because we as a human race have zero clue on how to move anymore because we don't move mm -hmm. anymore. And that's a big problem right now. You know, people are not moving. We're in this like lockdown phase. So people are just aren't and that's that's really a challenge because people's pains increase their emotions increase or decrease people's immune systems are going to become more compromised just because we're not moving or breathing mm -hmm. properly so all things that are really interesting for like our topical stuff right now not just golf yeah but it all relates back to golf so mm -hmm. i mean it doesn't have to relate to golf but in my work it does yeah so again i get out with with the thoughts that we just talked about like the tripod with your feet the pelvic floor the breathing patterns the chest back eyes up soft eyes i mean go out for a walk and try to feel all those different things mm -hmm. and just do a simple comparison of take about two minute walk normal don't even try anything different and then do two minutes of what we're talking about and just let's go back and forth with ourselves internally what was the difference what did you like what was hard and honestly, the things that were more difficult are probably the ones that we should be focusing on because that might say, well, the chest back was hard because we're so kyphotic. We need to learn how to get in these better postures. But you do that and all of a sudden, when you go home, and this is why 
this is why I'm going with this. I recently did a post on uh, Instagram where I was chipping all these ping pong balls around my house. And I was, I was just burying things all over the place. Cup was, wherever you put the cup, I'll make it. It was that good. But then one joker, one joker from South Carolina, golf pro, he's one of my boys, Matt Lucchese, he goes, hey, man, he goes, that's great chipping. He goes, you look worse than Jack Nicholas in his worst seat posture ever. I'm like, what? He made me feel so horrible in the matter of a second. He goes, why don't you fix your posture? And I looked at the video. I'm like, holy crap, I am the hunched back of Notre Dame. It was terrible. I never chipped like that in my life, but I had zero idea that I was in that. So I went out, did this walk, and came back, and I was like, and I'm in a better position. My son looks at me. He goes, why are you, why are you being so rigid, Dad? I'm like, no, this is what it should look like. Because he got so used to the other way. He was like, oh. He goes, maybe that's why I'm rounded now. I'm like, yes, I'm a bad father. <laughs> like father, like son, right? Yeah. Am I boring you yet? <laughs> no, never. So, so is anyone on here? Does anyone have any questions for Lance in terms of like golf things specifically? Anyone else want to harass him any more than they already have? <laughs> Nobody's, I'm gonna invite. I'm gonna I'm invite for both. <laughs> correct. Correct. I'm a, I'm a good host. <laughs> um, I know Robin Smith was on from. She's in Michigan. She's a running specialist, and um, she was talking about the foot and the ground. I know her and Paul Drumheller do a lot of classes on that. Check it out. It's really cool stuff on you know proper foot function in an mm -hmm. athletic move. And I think there's experts out there that you know, are far beyond my scope on these little micro universes like Janet and the pelvic floor, like you and the mm -hmm. pelvic floor with uh, female pregnancy. I think it's phenomenal that you're, you're going down these paths because I don't remember anybody ever talking about this before, like the last seven, eight years. Well, no, I, and I, I mean, I, you and I have known each other for 10 years and Janet reminded me just yesterday that at the World Golf Fitness Summit in 2012, she did a talk about the pelvic floor with rotational athletes. And I'm like, if you did that talk, I know I was there, but I don't remember this, you know, and, but that was something that it probably was so new to me at that point that I didn't even retain it because it didn't even have like a lot of like pertinence at that point, you know, but this is all really new stuff. And, you know, I love Janet and thank God she exists because she's had a major influence on my career tra trajectory. We do have a question here. Do you oh, see this no. from yeah, Casey Stein Casey. PT? Mm -hmm. Would you like to address? Um, so Casey, I don't want them to think about their core in a golf swing. All right. I think that's the last place I want them to think about. I want them to think about that stuff during activities of daily living, standing around the kitchen, walking, doing their exercises. And I want that done to such a degree or such repetition that it happens naturally within a golf swing. So if for instance, during your exercise, you can get your core to a level eight out of 10, whatever that may be. Um, if you can get to a six out of 10 or seven out of 10 in your golf, just as a byproduct, I'm loving it because you probably were at a two out of 10 before and anything that has that carryover effect without us mentally thinking about it is phenomenally important. So the more repetition we can do just to inherently, you know, reprogram our brain on how to be in these positions, I think we'll do our, our clients very good service. And, and whether you're a PT or a fitness or a golf pro, I think these little small postural things are all within our wheelhouse and the more we can refresh on them. Like you just said, I, you heard a great lecture from Janet in 2012 and then you're like, Oh my gosh, I don't re I don't recall all of it. We need to be smashed over the head a little bit more mm -hmm. often with it. And I'm glad every week I'm seeing something about pregnancy on, um, on your page. Cause it reminds me number two, safe sex is important number two, um number one that was the no corona one. babies no corona baby perennials <laughs> um yeah we have to, we have to take care of ourselves because i don't know of any other process in life that's more punishing than pregnancy you know just by the stories and folk tales of it that's that's true but you know like what you're kind of starting to say and then got a little bit bit pregnancy versus golf is you know you're saying that people just need to be repetitively practicing things so it becomes this ingrained yeah. thing that when you go to golf you no longer have to think about the core it just actually engages and it's that subconscious level yeah and what if i go back to my my commercial uh workout what yeah. if you can give me 30 seconds of that work a couple times a day that's it that's all i care about because it's that mental awareness of oh my posture will carry over because you'll be sitting there at the front door talking to the fedex guy and you're like oh my gosh yeah i'm standing on my right side i'm not balanced my tripod's off and that and that's where the real learning comes into play have you seen the Upright Go Trainer? Are you familiar with this? What are you saying to me? It's like you're trying to say something. 
Oh, oh is that the one with the vibrating things on yeah, your back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not paid by these people at all. But I've been um, prescribing these to a lot of my teenage athletes these days because those athletes have terrible posture. And they come in here and they look like a full-on foot shorter than they are. They've got a forward head. They're all rounded and hunched over because of these terrible desks that they stick them in at school. Then all the video games, all the texting, all that stuff, right? That little device has been so helpful for a lot of the athletes and, and younger, especially younger people that I see because mm -hmm. of the high level repetition, they wear this thing. And if you aren't familiar, it's like this little vibrating device that sits right up here on your upper back. And now mm -hmm. has this like necklace piece that makes it like completely idiot proof where you just drop it down your back. And every time you slouch, it buzzes you. And yeah. it's so absolutely annoying that people stop slouching because they don't want to feel it. But that high degree of repetition and that consistency that makes people, it makes a difference. And I've had a couple of young people walk in here lately and they walk in the door. I'm like, it looks like a different kid. And every one of them I've asked if they've grown and they're like, no, not at all. And it's just because their posture is improved. Like they look like different kids. Yeah. So. It's, it's phenomenal. The first time I saw that was um, Dr. Mike Boyd. <laughs> I was I was with him at a seminar and he kept like shaking. Oh, what's going on? Like, what is wrong with you? You having Caesars band? And he goes, no, I got this new shocky shirt on. And he showed me. It's not really shock. It's just a buzzer. It's just a but, buzz. But he, if anybody's seen him, he's a brilliant guy. But his posture is terrible. I mean, I don't know what they're doing in Nashville, but it's terrible. But it's really helped him get so much. He's like six foot two now. I'm like, what? I'm gonna send you and Mikey each in a bright go. I need one. I don't. I don't. <laughs> but but you're not a representative for the company. You already stated that. I'm not. But that doesn't mean I, I can't. Just, I can't Amazon it to your house. So I love it. Those are. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, uh, well, thank you so much. It's uh, been really fun BSing with you for a little while. Hold on a so, second. My, right. my light just went out. No, you're Whoops. fine. Keep going. <laughs> but I was like, I'm like, that's like the closing time light just like went on. You're like, no, Hi. It, just, it just shut down. Sadly, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, I really appreciate your time. Can you tell everyone where they can find you specifically like your website? If anyone on here is interested in Lance's remote training, it's really cool and great because in this kind of virtual world, I mean, he's been doing this long before, but really great point is that we are all doing, um, Hi, Milo. We're not talking about sprinting. We can talk about that later. But something that, you know, I want people to know where to find you. So if they want to be doing training with you remotely, they know where to find you. It's very simple. Just go to www.lancegillperformance.com, G-I-L-L. -L. And uh, my Instagram is LGP underscore Inc. Would love to talk to you. If you got questions, let me know. Shoot them at me. Um, if you need people in your part of the world, I can definitely find you and hook mm -hmm. you up with the right professional as well. So you know, the more interaction we do as a family, the, the better we all move the ball forward. And I want to say thanks to all your fans, um, except for Milo, on being so proactive and helpful for the, for the rest of the world. Yeah, Milo, I'll put you in there, too. <laughs> Milo, get a Lance sprinting with you. He needs it. I do. I and, the, and the dogs. Yeah. You guys look close enough together. Get Megan to go with you, too. I'm just faster than him. Let's, let, let's just end it there. <laughs> Perfect ending. Love you. Have a great night. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Abby. Good seeing you. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye.